Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, I'm here to talk to you about a new kind of open source competitor to Data Build Tool, DBT, uh, and that is SQL Mesh. So SQL Mesh is kind of aiming to be a more enterprise scale DBT where you have not just you know sequence SQL scripts, but with more production grade features baked in, like backfilling, versioning, environment management, um, into the core of the product rather than relying on the need to you know use DBT Cloud or other services to actually manage those aspects of your DBT pipelines. So I think it's a pretty cool tool and definitely worth going into and exploring if you're looking for alternatives to DBT. There haven't been a lot out on the market yet, so this is uh, really refreshing. And so I'm gonna do is just kind of give you a quick uh, primer on how SQL Mesh works, and then I'll show you how you can install SQL Mesh locally and get started using it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So one of the coolest features that SQL Mesh provides is actual built-in column level lineage. So as you're writing your SQL and as SQL Mesh is then running it, it's going to automatically keep track of, hey, how is, how is this column's attributes changing over time? You know, its size, its shape, its uh, typical entries, number of rows, um, and every change within your SQL model is tracked so you can roll it back um, and you, know, you have really seamless integration with CIC tools, um, environment management, and make sure that, hey, I can deploy, but then if something goes wrong, roll it back, compare different versions, test new changes, um, and then this pairs really well with its ability to have different virtual data environments. So instead of DBT, which kind of relies on you to go in and set up your own virtual environment to actually run DBT in, SQL Mesh kind of takes that <clears throat> as a core state of how you run SQL Mesh. You'll run your dev environment, you'll run your testing, your staging environment, you'll run your production environment. And so these you know, will be sequenced kind of versions of that production environment and so, hey, I can make these changes in this lower dev environment that's hooked into my dev databases, my test databases, validate that these are actual good changes, that this is going to do the thing that I expect it to before pushing that up into production, but then also incorporating, you know, kind of all those CIC tooling, so like versioning, like being able to roll back, so that when it comes time to push those changes to production, if there's something unseen that happened, you have that peace of mind to be able to roll it back pretty much immediately after it happens. And that's also where SQL Mesh is kind of understanding of the actual models you're deploying works in because you have the SQL Mesh automatic data gap prevention uh, method, which is built in and will say, hey, you know, is there a massive change to the lineage or some mistake is going to mess up existing workflows um, if you make that change? And then finally, you have a free UI that you don't have to pay for. So, you know, everyone got is really mad at DBT for making you pay for DBT Cloud by the seat, you know, $100 a person a month. Pretty extortionate for just a glorified UI. Um, and so here you have a UI built in, you can run on your local machine, included in the open source package, no kind of crazy licensing fees there. So just really awesome tool. And then also continues to work with all the typical kind of integrations you would have. Um, and you can also run DBT jobs within SQL Mesh because at the end of the day, it's just SQL code that you're running in a sequence. So not that hard to kind of, uh, you know, move back or forth. And that also integrates well with, you know, Airflow um, and then your Snowflakes, your Databricks, all those tools as well. Um, so that's the high level understanding of kind of SQL Mesh, how it differs from DBT, you know, just being a more comprehensive platform with that, with things like backfilling, automated testing, uh, CICD support, you know, different environments. Um, so now let's get into how you actually develop in it. And another cool feature is that you can use Python and SQL when you're developing with SQL Mesh, but I'll get into that in a second. Let's start going through the install guide. So if you want to follow along, sqlmesh.com, hit this install SQL Mesh button here, and then I'm going to flip over to VS Code and start following through these instructions in my local environment. So to get set up locally with SQL Mesh, <laughs> first thing you need to do is create a Python virtual environment. So I just did this with the terminal command here and then source bin activate. So just activating the virtual environment we just created, just so you have everything self-contained within here in case you have any dependency conflicts. And this is again, in keeping with how SQL Mesh likes to say, hey, let's have a separate environment for testing and running uh, your SQL workflows. 
So then what we'll do is pip install SQL mesh, and this will install all the necessary packages, requirements, um, and then let's also install the web UI extras. So I'll wait for this to finish downloading. Um, and then I'm also gonna install pip install SQL mesh web. So put this here and awesome. So just installing some, all the packages we might need for SQL mesh. And then now that we have our environment set up, we can get started actually using it. Then what we're gonna do is just create a new directory for us to use for SQL mesh. So CD desktop, data guy video repos, and then make directory SQL mesh dash example, CD into there, so SQL mesh example. Cool. So now we have our SQL mesh folder set up. Now what we're gonna do is actually use DuckDB um, as our embedded SQL engine. So instead of needing to use a separate SQL engine or set up a whole database, we're just gonna use DuckDB. If you haven't used DuckDB, I have videos on it. I love it for just a nice lightweight SQL environment. So SQL mesh init DuckDB. And then this will set up the scaffolding for our actual project. Um, so here, I'm just gonna let this run for a second. And then what we'll do is actually um, open up. So once this runs, we're gonna open up the web UI and interact with it. So here we have that, and then we're in SQL mesh UI. And then we should see here is we'll have our application starting up. And now we have our, uni our unicorn web UI running at this location. Um, and then I guess I could click on the terminal, but yeah, it doesn't really work well. Um, so I'm gonna open up a new window here and then we will go to our SQL mesh UI. So now again, you know, contrasting this with DBT, no web UI out of the box. Here you have full web UI to look through all of your projects. And also if I go back here and just kind of show you what it looks like on this side of things. So I was just in terminal here, but I did make a directory. And if I go into desktop, here we go. You'll see I have a SQL mesh example now. After I ran that init command, it has all of the different uh, packages and requirements here set up for me. So super useful, nice feature to have there. And make sure we have our terminal still running. Second, and we don't, so one sec, gotta restart this environment. So don't make the mistake I did and shut off the terminal that is running the virtual environment and your uh, SQL mesh web UI, or you will have it turn off just like I did. Um, but here, so we have SQL Mesh Web UI, and here there's five different panes. So project directory, this is navigation of your product directory files, have your code editors here, so any open files you have, this is your code editor to use there. Um, you also have your inspectors, setting in information. Um, so if I go back here, so go up, go to light mode, dark mode, documentation, so if you wanna go to the actual SQL Mesh documentation. Um, and then you can kind of go into, so if I actually want to look at an individual model, look through here and you can see the models that you're running um, within your SQL mesh environment. So you can see seed models, incremental update, uh, full transformation model. Um, and then you also have details displays where you see full lineage. So you actually get column level lineage here, item ID, number of orders, item date, click into here. Um, you can see upstream, downstream. So really, essentially the same UI as you would get with DBT Cloud, but this is coming out of the box, totally free, can run on your local machine. Um, you can run, hey, I wanna initialize a production environment, run some backfills, you just hit this plan button up here, run a start date for the interval, so let's just see recommended, 12, 13, um, 2024, let's do 01, 01 changes um, and this is just I'm just kind of playing around with this right now uh, but you have different options for hey how do I want to do backfills how do I want to do test comparisons obviously don't have any data really hooked up in this but just want to kind of give you an idea of how everything works here um, and then you know if I go back to this models tab and then last thing here so the inspections tab is here um, so you can see run query diff um, so wanna, you know basically just choose any inspection around any of my models. You can also see seed data here as well. So really just kind of an all-in-one UI for managing and monitoring your dbt workflows. Um, and then the dbt run command will just build your models, test it, um, and then you also you know, can see, hey, is this gonna run or not? 
Um, you can also just run direct SQL queries. Um, so if I go into a SQL query here, so you can compile the query, should be able to run this. Um, where can I run it? Uh, okay, actually, it's on the bottom right. So yeah, I'm learning this alongside you guys here. So here, open up this inspection, evaluate, um, and actually, can I run this from here? SQL errors run. So one second here. So I've got this, dismiss. Okay, so we can see lineage there. Um, and, and that's really all I have to show you in this video. I just kind of want to make a quick getting started primer guide to gauge interest in this tool. If people are interested in using it, I'll make a further video on how to set up prod, dev, how to actually set up a database and push some code. But just wanted to make this video get the brains percolating, drop me a comment in this description below if you like this type of tool and I'll keep making content on it. But above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.